Hello friends, this is Durga again from Technology Mentor slash IT Varsity and uh, as part of setting up uh, Uzi, we have already seen introduction and architecture uh, in the within the context of setting up Hadoop ecosystem using uh, Hortonworks platform. So in this video, we will primarily focus on uh, how to set up Uzi using Ambari. In future, I will uh, try to set up Uzi with all kinds of distributions, but for now we will focus on Ambari. That being said, um, as I have mentioned to you as part of the introduction and architecture in the previous video, Woozy requires a database server and we have already created a database in existing MySQL database uh, um, which, which was created as part of setting up Hive. So in this we will try to use the same thing uh, uh, which is created in the earlier video with name Woozy database. And also we have created a user Uzi and we have granted permission to that uh, user on database Uzi. So we'll use that information to configure uh, um, Uzi. And before uh, setting it up, you have to run this command called Ambari server setup JDBC DB MySQL. You don't need to stop Ambari server to do that. You just have to log in. And uh, log into the host and then run this command. Ambari server setup JDBC DB MySQL as we are trying to use MySQL and JDBC driver you have to give the location of your of the jar file. Make sure you have the jar file here otherwise it can cause some issues. If you do not have jar file here this would have failed. So this validates that your jar file is there. Once that is done, once you get the message that Ambari server setup completed successfully, you can go to the web interface, click on actions click on add service and here we are trying to set up Uzi and I have as I explained to you earlier Uzi requires a database and also a server so we have to choose uh, our master server and one more thing is uh, earlier I told that I will be setting it up on AWS but I have some issues with AWS so I am going back to the virtual machines and we have only four nodes and I'm trying to set it up uh, on the master node and uh, the same way I have done uh, in MySQL on AWS to uh, like creating the Uzi database as well as Uzi user uh, uh, as shown in the previous video I have already taken care um, on MySQL database running on this uh, host as well or on this VM as well so we are in sync both uh, AWS and uh, this one are in sync as of now we are just adding Uzi component on VMs, leveraging the database which is already created on that HDP server host. That being said, we don't need to configure any slaves. We just may need to make sure that our client is point, uh, running, Uzi client will be running on the appropriate node. In this case, HDP server itversity.com because that is our designated cl uh, node or virtual machine on our four node cluster. If it is a six node AWS cluster, our first node uh, with the least IP uh, like ip 10.0.0.11.ec2.internal 11, 11, 11, will be our client and also it uh, it is our Uzi server as well if it is AWS we are using that instance as we are talking about VM we will be using this instance or this uh, virtual machine once selected you can click on next now it will ask you to customize the services which means you have to modify your configuration parameters using the Ambari web interface so we are we want to use MySQL database. So choose the existing MySQL database, and database name is Uzi. Username is Uzi, and password I have used ITVersity. So I am typing ITVersity, and then click on test connection. So it says connection okay. So our test connection is successful. If it is fa uh, failing, that means uh, either you have not run the Tambari server setup command uh, with a, a proper JDBC DB and JDBC driver, uh, then it can fail saying that, uh, saying some generic error, and if you click on the link, you will get the details. But if everything is set up properly, then you will uh, get connection OK. Once you get the connection OK, you can click on next. It's just a warning because we don't have a lot of storage on these VMs. So click on proceed anyway. Review the uh, repositories. It is using the local repository. 
and then it is uh, setting up Uzi server as well as Uzi database as part of this effort and then click on deploy. So when it comes to Uzi, it will take a lot of time to stop and start because uh, Uzi uh, will impact almost all the components in the cluster. So most of them have to be restarted while setting up and also after setting it up. So it will take a lot of time just to uh, uh, just on the restarting of all the services, especially if you are dealing with virtual machines. If it is AWS, it could be a little faster. So I will be pausing until uh, the restart uh, happens. So actually you can click on this and see what will what all will happen. So after uh, installing Uzi client, Uzi server will be installed and then each and every component um, related to HDFS, MapReduce, everything will be stopped and uh, started. So it will take quite a bit of time to take care of all these things. You can also click on these ones and see what is going on. As I'm advocating, when the setup is happening, it is, I will highly recommend you to click on those links and see what is going on. You can click on this also and it will give you a lot of insights of what is going on in, uh, behind. So. Uh, every time look into these, you will come to know uh, new new stuff which will eventually make you better Hadoop administrator. You will get good understanding about the architecture and the dependencies of each and every component and you can actually learn quite a bit just by looking onto these logs. Now after stopping all the uh, stuff, it is now actually starting the services. So it's been a while still it is uh, running because starting the name node will take time because it will start in the safe mode and it has to apply um, several things before it actually starts. If you click on that and if you click on this name node start, you will see this message of uh, related to safe mode. So until and unless it is completely started, none of the other services will be started. So it will take quite a bit of time whenever you do the uh, restart of the services, especially if it includes the name node. So probably it might take another good three to four minutes before everything is started. So now almost all the services are done. It is actually executing a check on the client. So you can click on this and see what is going on. It has submitted a Uzi job and uh, tracking whether it is successful or not. Okay. So uh, and it's still it is running, it will take little time and we will wait until it is done. And also we will see a few other validations so that you, you get uh, used to how we can actually run Uzi commands and all those things. And also while it is running, as Uzi is um, uh, based off of uh, MapReduce, you can go to Resource Manager and see that it is actually running the MapReduce jobs behind the scenes. And this job is just started, one job is completed and it is running the other job. So in this case, uh, we are just trying to run a MapReduce job, but as we are running through Woozy, you will see one job related to Woozy and the other job related to MapReduce program which we are trying to run. So that's why you see two jobs even though it is running only one MapReduce program. One for the workflow execution of Uzi and the other for the MapReduce program itself. So it is very important to understand this architecture because most of the times um, uh, it, as Uzi tries to handle uh, issues gracefully, the job related to Uzi will be marked as succeeded, but the actual MapReduce job might be failed. So you have to look at both the jobs to see if the job is really successful or not. Um, so you need to get this, otherwise you will uh, get into a lot of surprises and uh, you will be failing to troubleshoot the actual issues. Just keep in mind that Uzi will have more than, uh, uh, more number of jobs than what you are actually configuring in the workflow. So if you have three different 
jobs like high you one high job one quick job and one map reduce job Woozy might have when you try to run this workflow using Woozy you will have more than three jobs because uh, uh, the workflow itself will be executed by one or more map reduce jobs you need to get this into your head if you don't understand for now don't worry I will try to cover Woozy in detail um, going forward and uh, I will try to execute uh, almost all the actions uh, once I am done with the administration course so that you are familiar with how Woozy works behind the scenes. That being said, let, uh, let me refresh. So it is completed. So most likely our setup is also complete. Everything is started. Click on next. Click on complete. And uh, let it refresh and most likely you might have to refresh uh, data nodes yeah so in this case no because as part of the setup itself it has restarted sometimes it will not in that uh, in that uh, scenario you have to restart these services manually for now the setup is done now let us uh, run some commands from the back back end to see that our Uzi setup is successful even though the setup uh, is validated by uh, using Ambari, it is always better to uh, run some commands uh, by yourself to understand uh, whether uh, Woozy's uh, setup is successful or not. And also before getting into the validation part, let us review the uh, parameter files. As any other tool in Hadoop, Woozy will have a, uh, a directory under etc with that name and then there will be a conf directory and you can see uh, you can run ls-ltr command and you will see that xml file and uh, environment file etc and all the parameters which we will be um, modifying on the config section of the ambari will be reflected in one of those uh, uh, files so let me first uh, go through some important parameters these are the important parameters so Uzi base url is the url on which Uzi server will be running so to validate that you can actually run this command Uzi admin Uzi and then http let me first do this cat Uzi site.xml and here you will have that parameter this one let's let me copy this so this is the base url which you should use so woozy admin is the woozy command line command which will give you uh, details woozy admin woozy and then you have to so woozy admin minus woozy and then you have to give the url and then you have to say status so this url is from the woozy base url in the configuration file and then if you give the status it will tell you whether it is up and running or not if you want to check the version you can run this command and it will give the version now if you want to submit the job first you have to define the workflow and uh, for that they have given a uh, lot of examples and uh, as part of uh, ambari setup uh, as part of Uzi setup uh, using ambari and that example star file is already deployed uh, uh, into the cluster if you want to do it manually the best way is to run the find command for uzi examples dot jar sorry not not jar file it should be tar dot gz So you have this as part of the Uzi uh, documentation even if you are using Apache Hadoop and Apache Uzi directly without any distribution also you will get this file. So you have to copy this file. So I am going to my home directory and uh, uh, let me copy this. To here and then you have you can run tar xzf to untar them and then it will create a directory called examples and then you can go to examples and in that there will be source apps and input data and you can go to apps 
and do ls minus ltr so uh, it, this will give example for each and every type of tool Woozy supports so Woozy not only supports uh, hadoop related tools like hive scoop pig etc but it also supports shell commands uh, java main programs means plain vanilla java programs everything is supported by Woozy, but we typically use it only in the context of hadoop that being said if you want to run a map reduce program if you want to look at a reference you can cd to map reduce ls minus ltr here you will find uh, many files and the most important files are workflow.xml job.properties and the lib directory lib directory will have the jar file which we want to run which will have many java uh, java programs in that and job.properties will uh, will actually point to your cluster in this case it is showing it as localhost so you have to change to your cluster name uh, cluster ips uh, so you have to uh, modify this file so that you can actually run this program so in in this case I will run perl minus p minus i minus e command s localhost and I want to change it to hdp server dot itversity dot com slash g and job dot properties. Now if I cat it, you can see that it is pointing to um, uh, pointing to our cluster. Name node is running on this uh, uh, host on port number 8020 to confirm the port number it will be better to look at corset.xml and by default all these examples will be pointing to job tracker uh, uh, port number but our resource manager might be running on a different port for that you have to go to uh, view slash etc slash hadoop slash conf and in that you will have answer.xml file which will define the resource manager web interface and here let us search for resource manager and it is actually running on port number 8050 so you have to come out of this go to your job properties vi job properties and here you have to modify it to 8050 so it's very important that you uh, you have the appropriate information to run the program successfully and then uh, there, uh, it, uh, th these are all uh, now will become parameters which can actually modify uh, 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 the variables at run times so these are the parameter values which are defined for name node and job tracker and we are using these variables in this file like this dollar name node so it, it will change to hdfs hdp server itversity.com call 9020 slash user slash whatever uh, username you are trying to run this program with so this will be replaced by your os user in our case it will be root and examples root is another parameter here which is examples and uh, then uh, it is pointing to the workflow.xml file so once we modify that we have to copy these files into the H uh, hdfs otherwise the jobs will not run so the the path where we want to copy is represented by this so we have to copy the entire examples directory uh, after doing the modifications to this location uh, where hdfs hdp server itversity.com call 9020 slash user slash root so we will see that in a moment unless you copy them uh, you will not be able to run the program once that is done you can actually look at workflow.xml uh, so we are trying to run a map reduce program i will not get into too many details so this workflow uh, will actually uh, have this start to tag here you have to define that we are trying to run map reduce action that's why we have we are defining it as mr node and as part of mr node we are defining what is our job tracker uh, which is uh, hdp server itversity.com call on 8050 which is our resource manager ip and port and similarly we are defining what is our name node so these values will be replaced from job dot properties so there are many variables like that all those things will be replaced automatically and we are trying to run this program called uh, arc dot apache dot uzi dot example dot sample mapper sample reducer uh, mapper for map program reducer for reduce program so that being said 
uh, once we make the modifications in job dot properties to appropriate locations uh, let me go to lib and also do jar tbf so user jdk 64 jdk 1.8.40 slash bin jar and then tbf and our file OZ examples jar file and you can see that sample mapper and sample reducer are there so we are trying to run these programs as part of the OZ workflow and uh, this this jar file has to be passed as part of the lib lib directory okay that being said now we have made the modifications to our job dot properties to point to the right uh, uh, name node and job tracker or resource manager now you can go to your home directory and you can actually copy the entire examples directory to user root now you can see hadoop fs minus ls user root examples apps and map reduce and you can see all those files and also make sure you uh, if there are any issues first thing you need to look at is your job dot properties in hdfs to make sure it is pointing to the right cluster for that you can go like this and then slash job dot properties hit enter and it will confirm that it is connecting to the appropriate uh, uh, host appropriate node for both name node and uh, job tracker or resource manager once that is done you have to run command called woozy job woozy and uh, once you give this uh, base url you have to uh, you have to say config and here you have to give the local path so so far we have given uh, we have copied into the hdfs path and here we have verified the job dot properties in the hdfs now we have to give the local path so instead of examples let me give uh, root root is the home directory and then examples and then uh, uh, apps map reduce and job dot properties job dot properties minus run now the Woozy job will be submitted. If you want to look at the status of this job, you have to run Woozy job, job Woozy and this base URL minus info and this and then this Woozy map reduce job. And uh, uh, right now it is running. So this is the Woozy job and it will be submitted as a MapReduce job with uh, uh, job ID 0005. Now if you go to resource manager web interface and look at this, there are two jobs running but it is only showing five here because this one is actually representing the MapReduce job that is running the workflow and that MapReduce job is actually triggering other MapReduce job which have the logic of uh, that sample mapper and sample reducer. So for this job, it has actually kicked off two map reduce uh, jobs. One is to execute the workflow itself. Second one is to uh, execute the underlying map reduce program. That being said, you can validate until it is completed. Now it is succeeded. You can refresh here. Both of them are succeeded. And uh, uh, if you want, you can get into this job and see uh, what uh, what this job have done where is it locks about jobs we want to get into job 6 and uh, click on uh, yeah the successful map and uh, Here for the job we can actually see the counters. As part of that you can see that it has read 33 records 
and uh, emitted 32 33 records out of the maple and uh, even in reducer it has emitted uh, 33 records out so the input and output are defined within the hdfs itself so you can actually say hadoop fs minus ls examples as part of uh, examples you have you we have seen three directories one is uh, source other one is apps and the other one is input data and uh, that is uh, beforehand when we actually copy the file into the hadoop after running the job it has created another directory called output data and you can uh, look at those things and see that there are files which will actually run the map reduce job and copy the data that being said i am not going to um, get into those things so our preliminary validation of uzi is done and also now you have seen few commands like how to validate whether uzi server is up and running or not um, the uh, the command for that is uzi uh, where is that uzi admin uzi uzi admin command will actually give the details about uh, whether uzi server is running or not and plenty of others and uzi job minus uzi is the command which which will be used to submit the jobs or check the job details that being said uh, let us review the rest of the important parameters we have seen the base url url already and we have used as, as part of uzi admin command as well as uzi job commands to submit and check the info of the running jobs and the other parameters are related to uh, jdbc in our case we are using mysql and uh, the parameters will represent those things now let me go to view etc uzi conf uzi site.xml file and uh, here you can check the see here you can see that uzi db schema name is uzi and most of these are related to jdbc itself so let me check for jps service so when we actually set up using mysql all these parameters are automatically changed by ambari so the password is itversity the database url is this one so th these are the most important parameters to set up the uzi okay and uh, there is a, a concept called whitelist uh, so in some cases you have to add your job tracker to the whitelist uh, so that uh, uh, your uh, job tracker can actually submit the uzi jobs if you don't uh, do it you might not be able to submit the jobs and uh, i'm not sure whether it is relevant for ambari but i have seen that uh, with cloudera so if for some reason your uzi jobs are not running one of the areas you need to check is whitelist okay so that being said we have uh, uh, set up the uzi we have seen the demo we have seen some important parameters and then if you want to look at the log files and uh, it's a standard log location it will be under cd where log uzi and you will see the uzi log which will actually give the details about the uzi server okay so if your uzi server is not coming up this is the log file which you have to look into so that being said um, i have already done the demo also that being said we are done with uzi and also we we are wrapping up almost all the core components that will be set up as part of setting up hadoop hbase might not be uh, need not be deployed as core component um, but uh, i just want to show you how to think about setting up uh, a, a service which is not map reduced based so setting up map reduce based components like uh, high up peak scoop all uh, uzi are straightforward but i want to show you how to think while setting up h uh, non map reduce services like hbase as well for that reason uh, uh, in this context of uh, supporting uh, building hadoop cluster using core components i have included uzi as well so so far we have started with provisioning uh, six nodes in aws or four nodes in virtual machines and then we have set up hdfs map reduce uh, uh, as well as yeah map reduce on top of yarn 
and also we have seen uh, the differences between classic and yarn and for demonstration of classic uh, we have seen cloud era manager a little bit and then we have set up tails pig uh, hive scoop and hbs and now uzi so these are the core components which are required for most of the uh, hadoop ecosystem so i will be wrapping up hadoop administration setting up cluster for now but i will be adding advanced components like high availability um, and uh, security and many other things over time but soon i will be starting on uh, uh, hadoop day to day operations so that you you get the complete picture of uh, uh, setting up uh, hadoop core components and also taking care of uh, hadoop day to day operations and over time we will add uh, advanced uh, concepts to this playlist that being said uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, listening to my channel uh, and uh, uh, please subscribe to my channel if you if you have not subscribed yet if you have any questions on a particular video please feel free to use the comment section of that video if you like the content of the video please click on the like button thank you bye